Hello and welcome to Oregon State University's Farm to Fork webinar series. My name is Sherry Cole. I'm the director of OSU's Sustainable Food Manufacturing Program, and I'll be the moderator today. First, we want to thank you for taking the time to join us. We know that you have a lot that's competing for your attention, and we really appreciate your time and interest. Our intention with this series is really to expand the conversation about our food systems, how they work, how they're changing to make them more sustainable, and importantly, the people behind the change that's, a, that's making that possible. Before I introduce today's pre presentation, I just want to run through some logistics. Um, we want this to be uh, available, not just for those of us who could join you today, but also otherwise. So we're recording the webinar and it'll be posted on our Farm to Fork website uh, next week. So if you want to share that, we would certainly appreciate it. The other thing is we really do want this to be a conversation as much as that's possible. And so we've reserved the last 15 minutes um, to really hear from you and, and, your, and the things that you're curious about. So you'll see at the bottom of the screen, the Q&A feature. When you click on that, please uh, add your questions and do that throughout the presentation. I'll remind you halfway through um, because I'm sure you'll get absorbed. And what you'll also see in the Q&A is the ability to upvote. So if you see a question that really interests you, upvote that and then that'll rise to the top of the list. Um, and then lastly, um, I just want to uh, uh, introduce today's speaker. Um, and, the and the focus today will be on the energy efficient food system. So please wel welcome Kirsten. Thanks, Sherry. Um, we're really happy to be here today. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm Kirsten Pinnett, and I'm a program manager in energy trust industry and agriculture sector. And I'm joined today with some of my colleagues who help deliver energy, energy trust programs to industrial, agricultural, and commercial businesses. And you're gonna meet them throughout the presentation today. Um, we're here to give you a brief introduction to energy trust if you're not familiar. Uh, the customers we serve and the programs we offer. Brad, Kelson, and Eric are gonna walk you through how energy efficiency plays an important part in, an, in a sustainable food system. And we're gonna tell a number of customer stories along the way. Um, I'll give you a quick overview of Energy Trust. We're an independent nonprofit organization that was started in 2001. And we serve most electric and gas utility customers throughout Oregon and Southwest Washington. That's about 74% of Oregon's electric customers and about 99% of Oregon's natural gas customers. We provide cash incentives and technical assistance to help our customers save energy and to invest in um, renewable energy resources. Energy Trust has programs that serve every type of customer, um, residential, commercial, industrial, and agricultural. Energy Trust is focused on making energy affordable and providing energy benefits for all customers. So now we're gonna dig into the energy efficient food system. There are many stops along the path from farm to fork, and there are many energy savings opportunities along the way. We'll start in the fields and the greenhouses where fresh Oregon foods are cultivated and harvested. And then we move on to food processing and after food processing, uh, many food products need to be stored in cold storage facilities. And as you can imagine, these, um, these facilities require a lot of energy. And then we'll finally get to the part that everyone enjoys the most, eating out in restaurants, or visiting local groceries. Uh, per square foot, groceries and restaurants have some of the highest energy use um, of all other types of businesses. And as we know, uh, water resources are a big concern in our region and energy efficiency in the food system can also result in water saving benefits too. And so um, we would like to also give a nod to what you might consider beyond the fork um, at the wastewater treatment plants and in some communities uh, which are also using re renewable energy technologies as well. So that's where we're headed on this journey. And I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Brad to talk about energy efficient farms. Yeah, thank you, Kirsten. Hello everyone, I'm Brad Moore. I represent Energy Trust Standard Industrial and Agricultural Program, and I'm based in Bend, Oregon. 
Uh, the story we're following today begins by cultivating crops to support food demand. Whether crops are grown in a field or a greenhouse, Energy Trust has incentives to boost efficiency of production. I'll share with you how Energy Trust helps implement energy efficiency with agricultural producers. Energy Trust has a broad range of incentives available for irrigation upgrades. Um, as drought continues, many Oregon ag producers are facing financial difficulties. Energy Trust's irrigation incentives can help reduce costs by saving energy and improving crop yields with less water. Additionally, many have appreciated other benefits from irrigation upgrades, such as labor savings. The list shown here provides some examples of upgrades that may qualify for Energy Trust incentives. Um, all of these save energy and several of them save water too. So here's one example. Um, it's a farm down in Bonanza, Oregon, which is near Klamath Falls. Uh, this site consolidated two irrigation pumps, a 30 horsepower and a 40 horsepower into a single 50 horsepower pump with a variable frequency drive, otherwise known as a VFD. Um, this site also did a big upgrade uh, by switching from five wheel lines and flood irrigation to a pivot, which is a far more efficient method of irrigation. And they received over $20,000 in energy trust incentives to help pay for that. Um, and they're also saving almost $6,000 per year on their energy costs. The next example is um, Three Sisters Irrigationist irrigation district, which is in Sisters, Oregon. Um, Energy Trust helped fund irrigation modernization upgrades at this irrigation district, and that resulted in many environmental and community benefits. Uh, one benefit, of course, was energy savings. Um, pressurizing water distributed in pipe requires less energy than pumping water through canals and then pressurizing it on each farm. Um, some on-farm pumps can actually be downsized or eliminated when pressurized water is delivered by the district. There were also a lot of water savings associated with this upgrade. Modern pipes replace open canals, so nearly all the water diverted from streams makes it onto the farms instead of being lost to evaporation or seepage. The result is more water left in stream, which benefits wildlife. Um, well, fish and wildlife. And lastly, another benefit um, is renewable energy generation. Uh, where pressure is created, hydropower can be incorporated to generate fish-friendly renewable electricity. The energy generation revenue, which will continue for decades into the future, stays local and can be used to help pay for the costs of these upgrades. Incorporating small-scale hydroelectric generation can also help Oregon meet its renewable energy goals, strengthen the electric grid, and increase energy resilience across the state. Switching gears a little bit, um, now I'll tell you some about greenhouse producers. Um, greenhouses are used to grow specialty crops in a controlled environment. This could be food crops or other types of crops. Uh, the conservation benefits apply in either case. And Energy Trust has many incentives available for greenhouse upgrades as well. Um, greenhouse incentives help reduce energy costs and, rely, and improve reliability of the cultivation space. The most common greenhouse projects that we incentivize are for greenhouse envelope upgrades, which help reduce heat loss, and um, HVAC, um, or heating, cooling, and ventilation upgrades. This case um, is a greenhouse operator down in Klamath Falls, a repeat participant in our program. So we've worked with them a lot. And the, the project I'd like to highlight here was um, they installed two new condensing boilers um, for hydronic heating in their greenhouses. Uh, these are more fuel efficient and have more consistent performance than baseline boilers or less efficient options. 
Um, and Energy Trust incentives actually covered 70% of the eligible cost for this upgrade. Next is another greenhouse um, in Hermiston, Oregon. And this particular producer uh, uh, installed some condensing unit heaters to heat the greenhouse space, um, an infrared uh, polyethylene greenhouse cover, and upgraded the end walls of the greenhouse to a very efficient twin wall polycarbonate panel um, wall. And uh, the incentives in this case covered 40% of the cost. All right, next I'll hand it off to Kelson. Thanks, Brad. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pat myself on the back there for remembering to unmute before I speak. Um, yeah, and thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, my name is Kelson Redding. I am uh, an outreach manager and do a little bit of account management on the um, Production Efficiency Industrial Custom Program with Energy Trust of Oregon. And uh, that pretty much means that we can help folks uh, study just about anything that might save energy. Um, I've been working uh, with food processing and cold storage facilities to help reduce their utility costs for about seven years now. Uh, I really love my job because I get the chance to help people make an impact at their facilities by working with them to reduce operating costs through energy efficiency. Um, so when it comes to energy saving potential, food processing is uh, at the top of the list of industries in Oregon. Uh, this is why many of Oregon's most recognizable brands maintain a working relationship with us. And getting us on your team now means that, you know, we can um, help you quickly when the opportunity uh, to improve efficiency kind of presents itself at your facility. So. Food processing includes uh, companies who make everything from frozen food entrees uh, to brewing your favorite beer, cold storage facilities, packing and processing facilities, essentially any business that adds value to a food product uh, likely has great opportunities to work with us in, in our industrial program. So let's, uh, let's jump into how we can help. There we go. So uh, food processing facilities are also often very complex and have substantial energy using systems that kind of enable them to mass produce our favorite foods and drinks. And working with Energy Trust gives you access to trained energy engineers who can help identify, develop, and then analyze, and, and even help to commission energy efficiency projects at your facility by taking a closer look at the set points and how things are operating. Uh, and as Brad and uh, Kirsten already mentioned, we also offer incentive funding to help offset the cost of undertaking these types of projects. Um, current incentive levels for food processors allow us to offer um, up to 70% of the project cost for capital upgrade projects and up to 90% for operation operations and maintenance or system optimization projects, things like leak repair, seal replacement, set point optimization, and all sorts of other uh, things along those lines. The actual incentive values are determined based on the calculated annual energy savings and cost of doing a project. Some examples of the types of projects that we work on with food processors are kind of listed there on the slide. There's lighting and lighting controls, um, refrigeration system, uh, system capital upgrades and controls optimization projects, high speed refrigerated doors, which uh, are pretty intuitive in what they're named, right? They just open and close real fast um, behind people and equipment so that you don't lose um, cold air out of the space. Uh, and compressed air projects are prevalent throughout industry, but uh, food processors included. HVAC, um, natural gas and process heat that might be used to cook or dry products. Um, insulation projects in both hot and cold. Heat recovery projects where we can put waste streams back to work for the, for the customer. And uh, product throughput or waste reduction improvements are also um, kind of another frontier to gain deeper energy savings with, with customers and that 
um, you know, we want to help you to improve your throughput or, or manage your waste reduction kind of dovetail into your continuous improvement efforts because there's energy savings associated with that. Um, but next, I want to quickly talk about another, you know, unique way that we can support facilities that have substantial energy consumption. And this is called strategic energy management. So saving energy at food processing plants involves more than just changing out equipment. Uh, and this is why we also work with customers on the more human side of energy efficiency. And we call it strategic energy management, as I mentioned. And it's all about engaging with your employees and getting the most out of the systems that you already have. So I wanna share a short video uh, that we produced with a great customer, Maduri Farms. And I think their folks can do a much better job than I can about explaining why strategic energy management is, is so great. Maduri Farms produces premium, high quality infused dried fruit for the industrial and retail food markets around the world. We produce and sell over 16 million dried pounds per year. We're trying to really establish uh, the values of, of the company. The trust, it really fit well into those values. I was expecting that that cultural impact to to take hold, but you know you saw the financial impact of it, and that was even that was like a bonus, right, on top of it. Just through improving the decisions on the floor every day about when to do things and how to do things, we made huge gains in energy efficiency. You don't need a capital project. It could be simple things, just like you, you find in the treasure hunts. They're able to walk us through the, the quick calculations for saying, okay, this is probably gonna be a $10,000 savings over the course of a year. And you really divide out those projects, which are gems, which are quick wins, which are capital projects, and which are we should do, but we're just not gonna be able to do. And that helps prioritize so that we um, know how to direct our resources. It wasn't a, you know, this one thing that we did that helped us realize all this savings. It was like, there's all these little things. It's, it's really great that, you know, the team is still working and we're still finding all these little areas that we can improve on. Through the Energy Trust of Oregon, we've seen a savings well over $500,000. They have the support they have the structure and they have the drive to make your program succeed. Great, uh, thanks everybody. Um, that's a, I really appreciate uh, Maduri Farms for allowing us to share their story. You know, they've been a, a really great partner and, and we've been extremely uh, pleased as they have with how well they've performed in the strategic energy management program. Um, we're gonna cover a couple other project examples before moving on to cold storage. Um, you know, as I mentioned, there's a lot of really notable brands in the in Oregon that uh, we've been able to work with and collaborate on energy efficiency, one of which being um, Yoshida Foods, uh, maker of delicious sauce and other products. And they worked with us to upgrade their pasteurizer, which allowed them to triple their output while simultaneously saving energy. Um, you can see that based on significant energy savings, we were able to pay for over half of the cost of their project and uh, put some pretty substantial dollars in uh, back into that to improve their efficiency. Next, we have uh, Gilgamesh Brewing, and, and we do a lot of projects with uh, all the great breweries in the area. I'd say out of industries, they are one of the more energy conscious 
uh, industries that we've come across, you know, a lot of people really wanting to make a difference there. And <clears throat> they installed a high efficiency brewing system and we were able to uh, chip in almost $10,000 in incentives for that. And they saved about $3,300 per year in energy cost savings based on that upgrade. Um, and that was that was their first experience uh, with Energy Trust, and and we've had additional projects with them since. So yeah, moving into cold storage. To get from farm to fork, food generally needs to be kept cold, and it turns out that keeping things cold takes a lot of energy. In fact, it's one of the most energy intensive links in the chain from farm to fork whether it's the ice that's stacked up in the freezer at the front door of the grocery store, um, somebody's making that somewhere and it costs a lot, or a cold storage warehouse uh, that uh, holds those frozen dinner entrees that we were talking about before. You know, Energy Trust can help reduce operating costs at those facilities as well. So how do cold storage and refrigeration facilities save energy? Uh, a big one that is uh, taken hold and is still ongoing is LED lighting and lighting controls. And they actually have a double benefit uh, of reducing the lighting energy used on the site, but also lights put out heat into the space. So anytime you can reduce lighting energy, you actually reduce the heat load that you're causing the refrigerated space to have to cool. Um, another is refrigerated, or pardon me, refrigeration and controls capital upgrades. And, and a big one, and one of my personal favorites in this area, is just refrigeration controls optimization. And we have uh, refrigeration engineers on staff who are really keen on this and can help you identify set points and settings that can help you save significant energy while maintaining uh, the needed temperatures and, and other process parameters. And we see many refrigeration systems that are not controlled efficiently. You know, we often see them running more or harder than product specifications require. And we'd love to help you work with that or work on that, pardon me. Uh, other projects include heat recovery, high-speed doors that I mentioned above in food processing, um, and dock door seals that work similarly to any insulation where you're just trying to keep the, the heat out um, and the cold in where it belongs. So let's look at a couple examples um, of cold storage facilities that we've helped out. Um, yeah, so this is Yo Cream International. Uh, we helped them with refrigeration, compressed air, and lighting upgrades, and were able to provide a, a north of $200,000 incentive for a really big savings project, uh, over 2 million kilowatt hours annually. Um, and that's over or almost $150,000 annually that they get to keep uh, in their bank account instead of uh, paying for utility costs. And I think um, Mr. Everill's quote at the bottom really highlights one of the best things about Energy Trust Service, in my opinion. You know, we're here to arm you with another lens to look specifically at the operating costs and evaluate vendor efficiency claims through kind of energy trust as a neutral third party. Um, so yeah, next we're gonna take a look at uh, maybe everybody's favorite ice cream, at least it's my favorite. I, I have a significant problem. Um, and Ruby Jewel is another great local company um, doing great work in um, we helped them with the new refrigeration system and uh, advanced freezer controls that help to save energy um, through various functionality that I don't really have time to get into, but it also helps them achieve a more stable uh, temperature and humidity. And it, the kind of end game is that they're able to save over $9,000 in utility costs based on these upgrades. Um, and next in the line from farm to fork is restaurants. So I'll uh, pass it to my colleague, Eric Bessel, and uh, thanks again for taking the time to listen. All right, thanks, Kelson. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Angelo Bessel, Energy Advisor for Existing Buildings. I've been boosting Energy Trust's implementation efforts since 2015 through customer outreach, 
engineering and operations coordination, K-12 schools coordination with the Oregon Department of Energy and the program's marketing efforts. My current sector focus is higher education outreach. A few fun facts about me. I've lived and worked in New York and Chicago before settling in Portland. I studied photography in college before there were camera, uh, cameras on flip phones, and I collect Middle Eastern vinyl records and cassettes from the 70s to the present. So now we're getting to the part where pretty much every Oregonian can see energy savings in action. Let's start with restaurants. Per square foot, restaurants are one of the highest energy users of almost any business. Not surprising. Cooking up delicious food and providing a comfortable space for all of your customers can use a significant amount of energy. Knowing where your restaurant uses the most energy can help you identify opportunities to save. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration's Office of Energy Consumption and Efficiency Statistics, restaurant energy use, uh, use is 39% cooking equipment, 22% refrigeration, 21% HVAC, and with water heating, lighting, and computer equipment rounding out the rest. So your top ways to save include dishwashers, ovens, and refrigeration. There are many steps you can take to reduce your energy consumption and control costs. Look for Energy Star certified labels when purchasing kitchen appliances, such as gas convection stoves, griddles, hot food cabinets, high efficiency gas fryers, steam cookers, dishwashers, and ice machines. Upgrade your lighting with new energy efficient bulbs and fixtures to save energy and improve lighting quality. Use lighting controls to manage exterior lights and turn them on and off during daylight hours. Install occupancy sensors in lighted use area in lightly used areas such as closets, storage rooms, restrooms, to keep lights on only when you need them. Change or clean HVAC filters regularly. Dirty filters overwork your equipment, using more energy and result in lower indoor air quality. And in this photo, we see the Blanchett Hedges of Hospitality. Their energy efficiency upgrades included an efficient building envelope, heating and cooling system, lighting and kitchen equipment. They saved upwards of 59,000 in energy trust cash incentives, and 14500 in estimated annual energy cost savings. Next up, we have one of our customer success stories, Cancun Mexican Restaurant. Brittany Ramos and her husband Oscar had a dream of opening their own Mexican restaurant. In late June, that dream became a reality with the opening of Cancun Mexican Restaurant in Sutherland, Oregon. Preparing to open a restaurant during the pandemic posed many challenges for the Ramos family to overcome. There were delays in deliveries and, and inspections due to COVID, as well as product shortages and increased prices. The Ramos family took over the lease of an existing restaurant, but they made many upgrades to the space before they opened. They painted the entire building, they redesigned the interior and upgraded some of the kitchen equipment, including purchasing a new, more efficient gas flat, a fryer with cash incentives from Energy Trust. Now that the restaurant is open, the Ramos family is focused on establishing themselves and their restaurant within the community. Okay, grocery stores. Grocery stores rely on energy intensive equipment to preserve products and to keep their businesses running, which can lead to high energy costs. We offer cash incentives to install energy efficient equipment that can help improve your customer shopping experience and stop your store with good savings. Food retail is a very energy intensive application. Typical supermarkets consume two to three million kilowatt hours per store per year. And refrigeration is the largest en energy consumer, about 50%. Anti-sweat heater controls are a technology that reduces energy consumption based on sensing humidity, dew point, or condensation with an expected reduction of about 50% or greater for the glass door and the glass frame. Evaporator fan motor upgrades upgrade the case from a shaded pole or permanent split capacitor to an electronically commutated motor or a permanent magnet synchronous motor. Adding doors as a retrofit onto open refrigerated cases greatly reduces cold air loss. 
upgrade your compressor rack control system with floating head pressure control or floating suction pressure control and install, install strip curtains in walk-in coolers and freezers. Another customer success story, Lily Food Mart, a family-owned grocery that's been serving customers since 1984, Lily Food Mart strives to keep their operating costs low. When Energy Trust trade ally Green Life LLC approached Seizung, the market's manager, he was eager to learn about the advantages of LED case lighting. It wasn't long before the 10,000 square foot market had replaced all the fixtures in its cooler, freezer, and produce cases with LED technology, trimming yearly energy costs by an estimated 3,000. The best part for Yoon was that energy trust incentives enabled Green Life to cut the upfront cost by 40, roughly $4,300, reducing the store's out-of-pocket expense to only 1,900. In addition to saving energy, Yoon appreciates how LEDs made the cases brighter and highlight products with excellent color. Because the new lights are cooler, the market's produce enjoys a longer shelf life. And another customer success story, Tienda Mexicana Monte Alban. For Irma and Armando Nocidal, Tienda Mexicana Monte Alban is more than a restaurant and a market. Named after an ancient archaeological site in Oaxaca in southern Mexico, the Woodburn, Oregon gathering place embodies their pride in the food and heritage of their homeland. When the Nocidals leased the former location, uh, former location of a former bakery and started purchasing new food services equipment, the restaurant equipment sales staff told them about Energy Trust of Oregon cash incentives. They had already heard about Energy Trust incentives available to businesses purchasing energy efficient equipment from Portland General Electric and the city of Woodburn. Talking about the incentives for gas fryers with a food service dealer, prompted the Nocidals to purchase high efficiency models for their new business. They received a $2,000 incentive from Energy Trust for installing two high efficiency gas fryers, which should, which should save about 650 in annual energy costs. And next up, I hand it over to my colleague, uh, Kirsten. Thanks, Eric. Uh, we're just gonna wrap up this journey from farm to fork. Um, we wanted to take a final moment to talk about that beyond the fork idea that we that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Oregon has some of the most advanced water resource recovery or wastewater treatment plants in the country. They're not only installing high efficiency pumps and other equipment, but also creating renewable energy through anaerobic digestion of wastewater solids. Um, and in some cases, hosting large solar arrays to create net zero facilities. Wastewater treatment is not really the end of the story, though, but it's certainly a, a, a part of the cycle of resources that are essential to the energy efficient food system. And with that, we thank you for being here today, and we're very happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. That was really informative. I would imagine that everybody in the audience is probably feeling the same way I am, that you just take a lot of this for granted and think that you know more than you do. So it's, I think it's really um, illustrative. And I also appreciate that you talked about the beyond the fork. Um, that's something that we're very interested in too. It would be easy to think of food manufacturing that it starts neatly at a manufacturing facility and it ends you know, with the consumer, getting it to a consumer, but the reality is um, it, it's more than that. So thank you so much to all of you. I'll go first to the questions in the Q&A. Uh, the first question is from Christy and she asks, what are the smallest operations that you might get involved with? Kirsten, would you, would you like to take that or I'm happy well, to either way? Yeah, I can take a stab at it. I think um, all along the way that we've been talking about, you know, from small uh, agricultural producers, Brad could kind of say more about that. Um, small grocery stores, we do work with rather small um, operations kind of along the way. And as you can imagine, some of these facilities are quite large. So um, I'll, I'll let, um, you know, Brad or Eric, do you have any anything to add on specifics around different sizes of facilities and operations that we work with. 
Yeah, I can I can start with the <clears throat> ag side a little bit um, to talk about farms. Um, and yeah, I would say there isn't really a, a minimum size of a farm that that we work with. I mean, I've worked with some farms that are five or 10 acres, which is relatively small because then I also work with producers who have hundreds of acres. Um, so it really kind of boils down to the upgrade they're doing and making sure that it saves um, enough energy to justify the cost that they're spending. And I can add to that. Uh, my, my colleagues in existing buildings can help businesses of all sizes, brick and mortar, uh, brick and mortar commercial sites. Uh, I would encourage you to contact existing buildings at energytrust.org and it will be passed to either me or one of my colleagues and we'll be able to help your commercial business. Um, thanks, Eric and Brad. Uh, Sherry, something I would just add on to that um, is that serving all customers is very important and we do have a number of programs and initiatives that are meant specifically to reach smaller um, businesses. So um, whether it's in the industrial, agricultural, or commercial space, there are um, opportunities for all sizes of, of, um, of customers. Thank you. I think the next question is for Brad, and it's from Bayonne, which I hope I'm saying correctly. And the question is, what is the uptake on the drip irrigation? That's a really good question. Um, over in on kind of the more Western parts of Oregon, I understand that drip tape is used, um, to, to make a general statement, I would say drip tape is used more commonly on the West, in the Western part of the state because of the crops that are grown over there, especially for like hazelnuts and berry crops. Um, and over in kind of the central and Eastern parts, um, I think people are, are interested in trying to find ways to use drip because it is a very efficient way to irrigate. There's even technologies um, that are kind of coming along at this point where people can install drip tape on their center pivots or linears so that the drip tape kind of moves along behind the machine to very efficiently irrigate. Thank you. The next question uh, also from the same uh, person is, what are some examples of waste reduction processes and I'll let you guys uh, kind of determine that. I have, an, I have a question kind of related to that. I, uh, I have a really good example of that um, without getting into specifics of, of who the customer is or, you know, what exactly happened there. You know, there's this particular customer, it was like literally as simple as reducing the waste that went to the floor, you know, stuff that was falling off of the processing line and, um, there was gaps and conveyors and things like that where, you know, there was some spillage and, and that amounted to a lot over the course of a, you know, a full day of processing. It amounted to, you know, hundreds of pounds of, of product that ended up um, essentially getting wasted. And um, from our perspective, it's already gone through many processes to get to the point where it then landed on the floor, right? So there's energy embedded in that um, food that's now not able to be sent out for sale. And so uh, we were able to help incentivize that customer to uh, develop solutions to eliminate those gaps in the conveyors and that sort of thing um, to actually rectify that. But you can imagine that that could be kind of extrapolated a number of different ways depending on what the process was but ultimately it's about avoiding uh, losing that embedded energy in the product as it moves through the chain of, of processes. Great, thank you. The next question is from Keith and it's a, it, it actually is a question of, about OSU. Is OSU looking at potential energy savings in collaboration with Energy Trust in the food science labs, OSU has a carbon neutral goal. So maybe, um, do you have a, does, is Energy Trust working with uh, OSU? Simply put, yes. Okay. Um, the one thing that I would add is that um, 
certainly in terms of uh, new, any of the new uh, construction, for example, the, the upcoming renovation of Withicombe Hall, sustainability kind of in all aspects is an important element of, uh, of design. And so uh, certainly making sure that, that they're, they're energy efficient is one component of that. Uh, next question is from Sally and it is, what about the role of water conservation, bioswales for rain harvesting and to make sure soil health is maintained and built? Yeah, those are, those are good questions. Um, and I would say the, the primary focus of the upgrades that Energy Trust provides incentives for is for energy savings. Um, and a lot of times water savings do go along with that. Um, and it, part of my job is doing outreach as well. So I do outreach with soil and water conservation districts. Um, actually with OSU extensions as well, and partners like that who work a lot in those other conservation practices. So um, I think that often, you know, the same landowners would be interested in saving water and energy and also other conservation practices. So uh, I have some exposure to those, um, even though my primary focus is, is energy, I would say. Great, thank you. The next uh, question is, is Energy Trust working uh, to build local food systems by offering incentives for food trucks and delivery via bikes, cargo bikes, etc.? I can take that. Uh, while food trucks are a bit outside the scope of Energy Trust's um, customer segment uh, offerings at the moment, commissary kitchens, which food trucks will often use to prepare uh, prepare foods before going out onto um, out onto the road. We do offer incentives. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is: Could you talk a little bit about cost justification? So maybe said another way, um, what's the process for companies who want to engage with Energy Trust? I'll go ahead and jump in there. Um, I think the the number one thing about engaging with Energy Trust is is to reach out, and uh, we will definitely be uh, extremely uh, attentive in getting back as quickly as we can with the relevant services. Um, I think Kirsten's going to leave her email up at the end, and I think it's in the chat. I know that if you reach out to her, she will get you connected with the right um, division to to serve your needs. Another kind of key thing to keep in mind is that often our incentives are contingent on uh, us being able to analyze a project and make an incentive offer uh, to the rate paying customer before they make a purchase. So um, I think it's important to reach out as soon as you can in the ideation phase of a project or especially if you just want uh, help in, in trying to understand what your project opportunities might be. You know, that's another a big value add from our side. So we'd love to come out and, uh, you know, take a look at what you have and um, help see if we can identify some projects with you. Great, thank you so much. Um, oh, did you have any closing comments, Kirsten? I was just gonna add on to that. Thanks for, for answering that one, Kelson. Um, there are lots of different ways to work with Energy Trust depending on what kind of business it is, um, the size of the business. And so my email address there is a great place to ask further questions or if you're interested or have a, you know, a potential project, we work on existing buildings and new construction. So there's, um, as Kelson said, the earlier the better, we can get you connected to the right people. Um, that is a great way to get started. Great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you again for joining us today. It was really informative and we appreciate your time and all the great information. I want to thank everybody else uh, for participating today. We really do appreciate your time.